All right, good afternoon. Welcome everyone to another noise control webinar. Uh, today's webinar, we're gonna be talking about roof curb noise control. Um, my name is Lee Chidenshin. I am the Director of Sales for the HVAC market. Uh, this is the uh, second installment of this particular webinar. So those of you that came back for a second run at it, thank you. Those of you joining us for the first time, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules. And we're not going to keep you too long today, a short webinar just to kind of discuss rooftop noise control as it pertains to air handling units. So um, when we talk about rooftop units, uh, you know, and the noise that's created, uh, it's especially a sensitive, um, sensitive area for noise control. Uh, essentially, when you have an air handling unit, it has to sit on a roof curb. Uh, that roof curb allows us to have an opening into the space below for the air to travel. Well, of course, if air can travel through an opening into the space from the roof, uh, also noise can continue down that same path. Uh, also, um, air conditioning units, rooftop units are giant sheet metal drum skins uh, with a lot of energy going on inside of them. So we have kind of four main sources of noise control that we need to worry about when it comes to an air handling unit. We obviously have the vibration from the rotating equipment inside the air handling unit. So there's often uh, there's fans inside of there. We've got compressors. We have rotating masses inside of there that are causing vibration. We also have vibration from the casing, what we call radiated noise. So there's all that energy going on inside of that sheet metal drum skin, and that, that vibration can kind of uh, emulate all the way through the casing of the unit itself and cause a lot of vibration. Next, you have uh, the third source of noise, the duct-borne noise. So uh, that's basically noisy air from the supply and return fans. Uh, and that's air kind of whooshing through the ductwork and making noise as it comes down into the space. And then, of course, we have the fourth and final source of noise to be worried about, and that's the breakout noise through the bottom of the rooftop unit. So this rooftop unit is being sealed on top of this roof curb, uh, so it's causing a vacuumed cavity here that noise can travel right down through the space. The roof is typically above some of the most sensitive spaces. So in big condominium uh, buildings, co-ops, et cetera, uh, the penthouse, the most expensive units are right below the roof. So uh, those, those, um, those residents are living right below an air handling unit with openings into the space. Uh, schools, libraries, performing arts centers, uh, we don't want that noise coming into the space. Um, hospitals, you have uh, surgery centers right below the roof line. Uh, vibration is obviously not good at when it gets in that space. So uh, a very challenging thing, and we have a lot of different ways to kind of help with uh, eliminating these different sources of noise. So one of the most simple ones is to use like an isolation pad. Uh, often the spring rail or the isolation spring rail is something that will get VE'd out. It's the first thing to go when the budget's getting tight on a project. Hey, get rid of the spring rails. Uh, we have internal isolation, which we'll talk about uh, in a minute. Um, but one of the cheapest solutions and just kind of a nice cheap insurance is to put an isolation pad onto the curb. Uh, and here you can see a Kinetics fiberglass isolation pad sitting right on the factory curb, and then the unit sitting down on top of that isolation pad. This is not going to work as well as a spring, but it is going to offer some isolation to the vibration that's coming from that unit for a lot less cost than a spring. Then there's the question we always get asked, and that's internal isolation. Well, inside of my air handling unit, the fans, they're sitting on springs already. Um, and what do we do? Uh, can we use those springs inside of the air handling unit? Well, when you're actually isolating that unit with pad, you can use the springs inside the unit that are under the fan. And I've got an example here of a very common spring hanger. And as you can see, we use springs and pad 
uh, in series all the time. Uh, it's a very good way to eliminate different ranges of vibration, different frequencies. So pad and spring work well together. So when you're isolating an air handling unit with a pad, uh, obviously you can go ahead and still utilize the springs inside of the unit itself. So the springs are sitting under um, the actual fans inside the unit and they can stay in place. Now, uh, while I'm talking here in the background, we have the installation video uh, that runs uh, with a, that runs for the isolation pad. So, as you can see, uh, an extremely cost-effective, cheap uh, uh, option to isolation is using the pad, and uh, you'll just see how easy from the video it is to install. You essentially glue it right to the factory curb, anywhere that the unit's going to be in contact with that factory curb. One of the Biggest, um, uh, well, one of the biggest problems we see with uh, complaints inside a space are when somebody's changing out an air handling unit. So they're replacing an older unit with a newer unit. The reason this is challenging because typically there is no spec being called out on uh, on what to do. Uh, and on new construction, when you move into the building, the noise coming out of that air handling unit is the noise, um, and it's kind of expected. When you change out the unit, if the new unit is louder and noisier than the old unit, then typically the occupants are going to be the first ones to notice. They're going to notice that noise right away. So, for instance, Mabel sat in the same office for 30 years. She's going to notice if that new air handling unit was significantly louder uh, than the old one. Um, then after the pad, after we've done with kind of isolation pad, we do have a light weight kinetic spring and curb rail. Uh, this comes in a curb and a rail. So here you would get the curb and the spring rail. The unit would sit down on top of that. Uh, and it comes uh, with a weather seal that kind of covers up all the springs. Uh, the unit sits up here on top of the uh, top rail there, compresses the springs. The springs absorb any vibration from the casing uh, and the fans inside uh, uh, and the equipment inside of the air handling unit. And then the old age question of, well, what about my internal springs? We know that the spring and the pad worked really well together. Unfortunately, spring and spring do not work well together. So you must lock out your internal springs when you're setting that air handling unit on a spring rail. Um, these units come with a, what's called a shipping lockout. So that fan isn't bouncing around on the springs when that unit's being shipped to the job site. We must leave that shipping lockout in place to make sure that those springs aren't active because spring on top of spring can make the vibration and the noise worse. It can actually resonate. So internal isolation needs to be locked out, but you're going to get all the isolation you need from the spring rail itself. Kinetics does offer that uh, without the curb. So this rail comes like this and you can actually put this right on top of the factory curb. Uh, it is meant for small to medium pieces of equipment. So your very small uh, package units, uh, mushroom fans, uh, things of that nature, uh, small lightweight pieces of equipment uh, with the spring rail, uh, it comes and you can actually attach it right to the factory curb. So in this installation video, you can see again, we have the factory curb. You're going to set the spring rail on top of the factory curb, attach it. Uh, and this is important in the restraint of the equipment. We'll talk a little bit about restraint uh, in a minute. Um, because obviously that's an important part of this. But uh, we have wind and seismic restraints that work in unison with the springs. Um, and that keeps the unit on the roof if there were a wind or seismic event. So as you can see, pretty easy installation. You set the unit down on the springs, you cover everything up with the weather seal, uh, and then you can seal it up. And now the whole thing's sitting on a spring rail. Once you get to larger pieces of equipment, uh, big custom air handling units, uh, I've even seen like a whole mechanical space kind of sitting on the roof on a big isolation room. You can use what we call our ESR. And ESR is for medium to large pieces of equipment. 
uh, high capacity for wind and seismic restraint. Again, you can see here there are springs being used in this system. So this rail that sits on top that the unit's going to sit on is resting on these springs. So once the unit is set down, the springs will take the weight of the unit. You adjust the springs to float the unit up on the springs and they will absorb all of that vibration. Uh, inside of the top of these, there are actually what we call snubbing elements. Uh, and the challenge is, of course, for wind or seismic restraint, you need to float the unit on springs, but you also need to hold the unit in place so that it doesn't get affected uh, by a storm or, or, or an event like a seismic event. So we do that with what we call snubbing elements. In other words, when the spring uh, is sitting in its, in its normal position and it's isolating the unit, the snubbing element is floating free inside of a captive uh, cavity. Then when an event were to push on the unit, that snubbing element's going to engage and hold everything in place. So you can float the equipment while uh, holding it in place with snubbers. And the reason that's important is because uh, when these air handling units get up on the roof, they do act as like a sail uh, and can blow off of their, their roof curb quite easily. Uh, here you can actually see um, a unit that blew right off of the curb. So not just the seismic restraint portion of the curb, but attachment of the unit to the curb is essential as well. And we need to make sure that we're not um, you know, short circuiting our efforts to isolate the vibration and noise with uh, you know, uh, the, the snubbing element. So here, this air handling unit was sitting on this factory roof curb right here, and it ended up uh, quite a ways uh, off the curb because it just got blown over by a windstorm. Uh, here's another example of a unit that blew right off of the curb. No attempt was made to attach that unit to the curb. Here at Kinetics, we offer a restraint toggle bolt. It's an engineered bolt that can go through the outside of the equipment rail, through the top of the curb, and actually uh, uses a toggle system to make a uh, through bolt attachment. Uh, the biggest challenge with air handling units is, of course, once it's uh, sat down on the roof curb, there's no way to access the inside of the roof curb to tighten a bolt or nut, um, you know, when you're doing a through bolt. So you having something like a toggle bolt where the contractor can drill a hole all the way through, insert the toggle bolt, uh, and uh, you would have a, uh, the toggle would fall down and now you've attached the unit securely for wind and seismic restraint. So the duct work, the ductborne noise, the source three of our noise uh, coming from our unit itself, ductborne noise from the supply and return air, that we control those by using aerodynamic acoustical silences on the supply fan and an acoustical plenum on the return air side. And we try to fit those within the roof curb to make it a nice, compact unit of noise control. We do that, of course, uh, we try to achieve that with, the, uh, with minimal pressure drop. The proper selection of ventilation silencing will control fan noise for both supply and return, propagating down the duct bars to critical spaces within the building. And the goal, of course, is to achieve the necessary noise criterion NC levels within the space as specified by ASHRAE. So often we'll be designing the silencers and the plenums uh, with the appropriate noise mitigating levels to meet the NC levels required for the space itself. So these are often custom designed based on a, a project specific location. Then in the bottom of your curb, uh, we do have acoustical treatments. Uh, these can be laid in a factory curb. Uh, it doesn't have to be a special isolation kinetics curb. You could be getting a sheet metal roof curb from the manufacturer of the air handling unit. Uh, and you can still put an acoustical treatment in the floor of that air handling unit. So for instance, the breakout noise through the bottom of the roof, this is what we call source four of the main noise. Uh, we control that with uh, some different options. We do have our noise block acoustical panels. 
this is a high STC curve floor. It will control noise breaking out of the unit through the building roof into the penthouse and critical spaces. Uh, this one's made with double walled perforated metal panels uh, and comes in an STC rating of 40, 43, 48, and 52. And then our newest option. So we kind of went uh, above and beyond noise blocking and we wanted to offer a much cheaper solution to rooftop noise control. Often the micro perf sheet metal paneling was just too much of an expense to put in a roof curb. Uh, a lot of contractors were throwing gypsum board or raw fiberglass in the bottom of the curb, not really knowing exactly what that was going to achieve as far as noise control. So we developed our RT7 system. So our RT7 uses kinetics, um, compressed isolation, absorption boards, and different layers of kinetics noise control paneling uh, to help control the, the noise in the space, making it cheaper than a micro perf or metal panel. We have these in an SDC rating of 37, 47, 52, and all the way up to 60. Uh, and we basically designed these to control the breakout noise, and it just lays in the bottom of the curb. It comes pre-cut for your supply and return ductwork, so the contractor can just lay it right in the curb, uh, and you're guaranteed a really cheap way of controlling that noise. The RT7 product we also had uh, independently tested by a lab. So in a tech, actually, um, tested every level iteration of the RT7 for us. So if you go to the website and uh, um, just search RT7 or go to our roof curb section, you can actually download the testing reports for each SDC level rated RT7 treatment that you can get. This makes it a nice kind of picnic basket of choices, uh, you know, based on how sensitive the space is below. Uh, an STC 60 is going to have a lot more layers and elements to it than an STC 37. But again, everything's been independently tested by an acoustical lab. So we can kind of show, uh, the, you know, everything that everything that it needs to do for each level of STC RT7. So that's it. That was uh, that was a nice. Uh, I wanted to go about 20 minutes. So I didn't want to keep everyone for too much time. Uh, but as you can see, um, you know, uh, rooftop noise control is, is something that's very important uh, and it can be as simple as some isolation pad uh, and a treatment in the bottom of the curb all the way up to an extremely built up spring uh, steel isolation rail system that's seismic and wind rated with uh, acoustical duct silences and floor treatments. So I appreciate everyone's time today. You can put uh, any questions uh, to my email, which is on the screen. We'll leave that up uh, here for anyone. Uh, there's also a questions chat here and anyone that wrote questions throughout the webinar, I'll get those and we'll respond through email. So thanks again, everyone, for your time today. Uh, and uh, there's lots of information on the website if you uh, need downloads or any kind of details. Thank you.